Welcome to the Fish Room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a Tuesday tip. Now I had planned to work more on the bins outside for you guys, but the weather had other ideas. There's another snowstorm coming, so today we're going to work in the big boys tank. And I know a lot of you have been really excited about me doing something more with that aquarium. Today we're going to do phase one. I'm going to add plants. This could go a few different ways. They could absolutely love it. After all, especially gars are found along the thickets at the side of large rivers. Or it could go poorly. They'll destroy my $100 plant and I'll have a huge mess to clean up. So let's get started and see how it goes. If you follow me on social media or watch my live stream, you'll already know about this little piece of bulbitis I picked up this weekend. I attended the big fish deal and I saw this giant piece and I just couldn't resist it. Uh, so today we're going to figure out what to do with it. I had a bunch of ideas. A lot of you suggested that I should cut it up and split it between tanks, but I think that it's just too incredible to do that. So the thought is I may try it in the 220 with the big boys. now. In the past, they've been a bit rough on plants, but I'm thinking that this one might be big enough, and if I secure it well enough, then it may work. So we're going to give it a try, and if they start to shred it, I'll pull it back out. Now, working in this tank is um, always a little bit stressful because the fish bite, they move very quickly, and they're very powerful. Anyway, I've gathered together some supplies, some wood, some wire, and some scissors uh, in order to attach this to a piece of wood to drop it in there. So let's get started. Now the first thing I'm going to do is for my safety. I'm going to drop the water level quite a bit. And that's because this little guy likes to take chunks out of my arms. Um, this is a Cuban gar. And he has quite the attitude problem. Um, he's a great fish, a beautiful fish. He just really likes to bite. So I'm going to drop the water line to about here. And the thought process behind this is not only to protect myself, but to protect these fish as well. You see, gars are prone to darting. And if they startle and bang themselves into the lid or the sides of the aquarium, they can break their back or their beak. And we do not want that to happen. So I'm going to drop the water line just so that if I scare them when I'm working in the aquarium, they're less likely to jump up and hit themselves on the ceiling of the aquarium. Now while that tank is draining, I'm just going to look over this plant, remove any pieces that are unhealthy, have dark brown or dead, or just plain loose, like this piece. Um, all in all, this piece is super healthy. I bought it from a hobbyist from Guapa named Victor and he can obviously grow some plants. You can see there's a few pieces that look a little less than stellar so I'm going to go ahead and trim them off right down at the rhizome to give this ch plant the best chance of doing well in this big aquarium. For the most part though this is a, an extremely healthy piece of African water fern and I was absolutely geeked to buy it. It was actually attached to a piece of wood when I purchased it but uh, I took it off that one to add it to one that I took out of the big boys tank. I don't think me cutting off these several fronds is really going to make any difference of the impact to this plant. So I've taken this big piece of wood out of the big boys tank. Um, and the reason I took one out that was already in there was just so that it would sink right away. I've also grabbed some floral wire. Uh, normally I would use super glue, but these big guys are so strong. I really want to make sure that this thing doesn't get uprooted if possible. If we flip the plant over, you can see that it is quite a healthy mat. So I'm just going to take my piece of wood, lay the mat on top of it, and secure it with some wire. Now you could also use fishing line. That's totally appropriate, but again, these are some big fish. Now I house this temporarily overnight in a, a 75 gallon. So I do need to look over it carefully to make sure there are not any fish or snails in there. Now again, because this is a rhizome plant, it does not need any substrate. So it should do really well in that big tank as it has a high nutrient load because of the waste of the fish. Now the plan is to just drop that log right in over here and then shift it over towards the middle a bit. But it's really going to be uh, an experience.
experiment to see how they do with this. So let's go ahead and add it in there. careful see that little Cuban he was already trying to come in and explore my arms now I'm just refilling the aquarium the fish don't seem to know what to think so far uh, the only concern I have about this plant being in here is it does reduce the amount of swimming space However, it does not go fr from the front to the back of the aquarium, so I think it'll be all right. I went ahead and added some additional lighting, which is just the Fluval 6500 59-watt LED, their new plant fixture. And uh, we'll see how it goes. It's dimmable, so if it's too bright for these fish, I'll be able to reduce the output so that it's a little less intense. But I want to give this plant a fighting chance. I went ahead and rearranged some of the wood in here while I had the uh, water level down. But again, it'll really depend on what the fish want in this aquarium because they can easily move all of this wood without any problem. We'll see how this big piece of bulbitis does and if they destroy it or start to shred it or move it around, I'll pull it out and put it into a different aquarium. But as you can see, it takes up almost half of this um, seven foot aquarium. so. It was too impressive for me to chop off right off the bat. Now one thing I did do to try and help this uh, plant have some success is I oriented it right over one of the filter discharges. This is a plant that generally likes some flow, so I'm hoping by having this really great circulation by its roots, it'll give it a better shot at doing well in this aquarium. As you can see, it is an absolutely incredible piece of plant. Right now the fish don't seem to know what to think. <clears throat> this guy is completely unfazed, but everyone else is sort of hiding out in the corner over here. So we'll give them a little bit of time and see how they like it. I have a feeling in the long run they're going to love it because this thicket is going to provide them with a really comfortable hiding place. Up next for this aquarium we'll be figuring out some sort of background. and You guys have given me a lot of really great ideas and I hope to get that done in the near future. Now make sure you guys are subscribed and have hit that notification bell so you don't miss any updates on this aquarium. I'll be sure to let you know Thursday how the fish are doing with this new chunk of plant. All in all, I'm cautiously optimistic, but we'll just have to see. Up next for this aquarium, we'll be figuring out some sort of background, even if it's just as simple as painting a piece of wood and sliding it behind there. I really want these guys to become way more visible and easy for you guys to view because they're my favorite fish in the fish room. As always, thank you guys so much for the continued support. Let me know below if you have any comments, suggestions, or questions. I think eventually we may have to name this sassy little Cuban gar as well. So start thinking about that. Make sure you stop by my Instagram, my Facebook, and my website, MsJinx.com, where you can find my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things nano.